Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant, Yo, Chris, what's up? aka hey. CGM, as well as our featured guest of the week, fellow YouTube gaming streamer, and maybe even soon to be Twitch streamer, dare I say, Narcost <laughs> in the house. How you doing, my man? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, just, you know. <laughs> bleeding purple over here so thank you for <laughs> inviting me over you know it's uh, funny because narcos got in here um shortly before we started recording he's like all right so uh where do we do are, are we all doing webcams he thought this was going to be like a video podcast uh it's not to that point yet uh just just audio as as uh as handsome as chris is we we don't like to see him on the podcast but it's just not going to happen this week I break everyone's screen, so, and I'm not paying for that. I don't have the money to fix everyone's screen. Oh, you should definitely have to pay for it. So, for those of you guys who don't know, Narcost is one of the early adopters of YouTube Gaming's, uh, or rather, YouTube's gaming uh, proprietary stream called YouTube Gaming. Um, And he's still, him and I are still early adopters and current streamers. How do you how do you like your time on YouTube gaming, man? I know it's had its ups and downs, but where are you at with it? Well, I, I think everybody's really experiencing the downs of like creative content as of late. It's kind of ridiculous. Like even when I started streaming and it started kind of picking up its momentum, it's been nuts. But yeah, there's a I, I started off on Twitch and I ended up on YouTube and I still always kind of liked it. I don't know. I think. I think that's probably the secret with any sort of like streaming platform. It's like getting in early and seeing it kind of grow in those initial communities is what keeps you there. Right. And that's what it's been. And that's what it's been for me. And that's like uh, what it's been for, I think, for you even. Because you've, you know, you've been pretty staunch with it too. And I, I, I appreciate it. You're up for the criticisms. But, you know, like the, the, the beautiful thing about it and why I think I hold it so dear is that, you know, we've actually – We've met IRL, you know, we, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and that was what was kind of amazing about that because I went to the very first, uh, Twitch meetup, uh, the ones that they do for all the cities now. Um, mm-hmm. but I originally went with, uh, I am Brandon and he hosted the very first one in Chicago. And even those people who were fantastic individuals, uh, that I got to meet live, it was still nothing like the streamers that I met, like meeting you, it was like, we've been friends you know since you know high school or something it was I nice and thought easy that was interesting i agree with you um that was one of the last things i did by the way before moving to vegas um that was what 2016 roughly? 2016 yeah. yeah so uh two weeks later i moved into my place in vegas and that was my last ever uh youtube meetup youtube gaming meetup it was just you me and i think uh was it snake, snake. yeah it was snake was there yes Yes, and and I totally agree with you. It's like we met at IRL for the first time after I had watched your content for a few years, and it's like we already knew each other. It was pretty interesting. So now you guys are just gonna make it down to North Carolina so I can show you guys how to eat real barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love barbecue. And North Carolina is one of my favorites. I used to I used to do a lot of business trips down there, so it's beautiful. You know, so here's the thing. Business trips and air quotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know it's a kind of like a dead topic, but um, remember back with, uh, I think a couple of years ago, Tana Mojo got kind of <laughs> upset with the whole uh, VidCon thing. She's like, you know what? I'm going to make my own VidCon. I'm going to call it TanaCon. I think we could set something like that up, make it completely free, like actually free. Um, oh, yeah. And and kind of do something like that where it's super chill. It's just a hangout. It could be Sarge grilling up some burgers or something. And just real. Oh, you gonna put me to work? Real chill vibe. Yeah, absolutely. We'll put you to work. The problem is, is you're gonna have some of the same people show up who call you dad on your streams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and then know, that's gonna be a problem. I, I don't know if you're as cringed out by this. Well, you're officially married, by the way. Congratulations on on <laughs> the uh, marriage. Um, Welcome to never making another decision in your household again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I 
always thought that was the weirdest thing. I still don't know how it started. The whole um, people calling the streamer dad. I don't get it. Uh, it started because that kid wanted you to adopt him. Uh, Narcos, did I ever tell you about this? No, 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 no. I've never heard so the story. <laughs> back in my heyday, and let's be real, 2016 was absolutely my heyday. I was drawing in from 80 to 120 viewers per stream. Um, I grew like over 10 to 15,000 subscribers that year. Just an amazing year for me. Uh, I, I have my conspiracy theory as to what happened and how I was taken out of the YouTube algorithm. I kind of briefly went through it with you, Narcos, but um, anyway, there was this kid who came on, and anytime a kid comes on with like a screecher voice, you're like, okay, I'm going to be a little bit apprehensive at first, because uh, right. I, don't, I don't know if this kid's even old enough to be watching the content I'm putting out. Um, but anyway, he's he starts off real... Uh, Hey, Chris, could you stop breathing into the mic, please? Um, apologies there. Um, but uh, he starts off real calm, and he's like, yeah, I hate my parents. I'm like, okay, what, what else is new? <laughs> oh. Everyone says that. But oh, God. he becomes more and more incessant about it as time draws on. Um, I ended up, uh, fast forward a few months, I ended up later in 2016, uh, receiving an email because you know in my like just like every other um, content creator in my Twitter bio I have contact information where it says business inquiries only contact me on yeah. this email well this kid sent me over pre-signed documents for me to adopt him you, you, you mean formal adoption papers formal adoption papers <laughs> yeah. you, you, you got I am you not, got to be kidding I am not kidding and this kid knows where he's at I, tur I I shut him down and he's never been to my streams again I guess I broke his heart but he, he's the one who keeps leaving a dislike on your streams he probably is I don't know but um <laughs> yeah dude, like the, the internet did he put your very... full name on the papers no he put raining ravens <laughs> oh my god oh no so that wouldn't hold up in court anyways it would not at least he didn't put court. raging ravens um i kind of feel for the kid because he said he's having a hard time but hey every kid has a hard time i had a hard time growing up but um wasn't he like 12 no, uh, bernie no, sanders I, no white kid I, has a hard time I growing think up he was a little bit younger than 12 if i'm honest um and yeah he's just he just really wanted me to adopt him. He loved the streams. He was part of the notification squad before the notification bell was even in existence. I mean, I would tweet about it that I'm about to stream at a certain time, and he'd already be there, ready for the stream. Like he, it was like an, a fan addiction type deal. Um, so you, yeah, true, uh, a true obsessed fan. You had a stand, dude. dude. He's, he's he's a stand for his king. That's all there is to it. Bro, yeah. <laughs> you had a fatal attraction on a 10 year old. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's that was a little creepy, I thought. What, what was the weirdest thing for you in the last almost four years of streaming on YouTube gaming? What's the weirdest thing that has ever happened to you? Anything even close to that? I, formal adoption papers? <laughs> no. I, I don't, I, I, I still can't believe that, uh, that mentality. Like, who, who, who does that? But but I don't. I, I think what it is is when you meet your your first fans, or when you're respected amongst your peers for the right. first time, like when you're recognized by other streamers. Right. I think that was always the weirdest. But like, I, I would probably say somebody in my hometown actually mm -hmm. knowing who I was that I. It, and the way I keep streaming is I keep it like a secret identity. It's like literally like um, I'm like Superman. Like, you know, I just take the glasses off and I go on. And who you are. <laughs> nobody knows like I stream at all. And you wouldn't think that I would stream like in my normal life. So it's kind of like a. Well, until you hear the, the voice that is. I mean, shout out to Matus. <laughs> he tweeted out uh, last, I think yesterday or day before. He's like. He called you the the discount Markiplier or something because you got that Markiplier <laughs> voice, you know. Chris, you're breathing your mic again. <laughs> and um, you know what that actually stems from is that you know Markiplier uses uh, 
it, it, it's called like stage voice. So like he does that really hard emphasis like that. Right. And that's actually something that I developed from speech, um, speech therapy. Uh, cause when I was younger, I actually had a really bad speech impediment. Uh, I couldn't even say my name. Um, really? it was just so jumbled. So that's actually what oh, I gosh. learned. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. That's why I kind of, I've learned, um, through that because like, I was so shy that the only way, like I really did anything was like, I listened to audiobooks. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I taught myself to slow down. And then I had a speech therapist through my school. So that's why my voice is the way it is. Cause people don't believe <laughs> it's oh really God. just because I'm, I'm trying not to like, you know, stumble over my words because that was a, that was a real big problem. So like, that's where, uh, like I learned how to like do Duke Nukem. Like when I heard Duke Nukem 3D, like when I was a kid, when I was just playing it, I couldn't believe my ears, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Right. So I used your to ass, it, your face. What's the difference? yeah? You face your ass. What's the difference? <laughs> like that. Hearing that as a seven year old, you know that was like that was pre South Park. That was pre. I was like, holy crap! Like this is like this is what a video game is, and so that's what I used to try to practice as. So that's actually where. Uh, my voice comes from is that I actually I couldn't talk. <laughs> so that's pretty great. Um, so on the topic of Duke Nukem Narcos, what would you do uh, if Bethesda took over Duke? Uh, I I don't know how. What what's the rating on this podcast? <laughs> because I, I don't um, even you say whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. Oh, I would just I would shit to the moon if Bethesda did it. If they gave it the Doom 2016 treatment and it was just all about Duke Nukem harassing his enemies and like interacting with the environment, I would lose my mind. I uh, think they'd have the best chance at doing it right. Oh, absolutely. My, my head on what they did with Doom and 100%. Uh, Doom and Wolfenstein. Not, I mean, the new Colossus was kind of lame, but it's getting so fucking. It's getting so weird. Like video games are in a weird, weird spot. Like it's but like they're, they're putting, weird. They're putting politics in Mortal Kombat now. All right, R- right. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Like my my whole thing is is like video games are supposed to be escape, and like I get that. I get what's going on. Like I appreciate everything that's going on, but it, I mean, like even the gaming, what like what the developers are trying to do from this mis- like this unspoken audience through like Reddit forums. And like the the mixture of how people are responding to vi- like game developers, like what I've hated it is like, and, and this is also tying back to what was like the strangest thing. I think it's the like the worship of things now. It's been really weird. Like people don't like play video games anymore, and like that's why I realized like they live them in a weird yeah. like it's got it's gotten really bad. Like. Fortnite has like it, people with a Fortnite identity. There's people like, oh yeah, I'm really good at COD, and like it's based off of like I'm a Dark Souls guy. I'm a real hardcore gamer, and like they worship the same, the the same like hyperbole over and over and over again. It's gotten weird, right? It's gotten really. It's almost weird. like Ready Player One coming to real life. Well, even um, are you guys even familiar like with VR chat? Yeah. Oh yeah, I see. I've seen you do like. When you rated somebody for that was doing it, it was it was hilarious. My first exposure yeah. to VR chat was back when that uh, that meme last year took took off with the oh, uh, no, I mean, you the knuckles. knuckles. To, yeah, yeah. you got in knuckles. Yeah. I mean, it just knuckles seemed like a total horror show. Well, uh, and that's what's <laughs> crazy is that subculture is so ridiculous now. And like this is like the weird stuff that you come across as streamers when, especially when you're in contact with other people who create. Right. It's like there are VR chat, which is mostly I'm I'm gonna probably throw out a pretty solid number here, probably about like 70 30 men to female ratio. Um, and most everybody is dressed up as some uh uh skimpy anime girl, and like they're making their own subcultures. Like they there's online virtual reality stars. Yeah. Um that like do singing and dancing and it, and it has this whole humongous like ravenous subculture that is like been incredible to watch because it's like we're actually getting video game subcultures within society and they're not only making money from it but are actually getting celebrity out of it and That's that is something scary though when you think about it cuz like if somebody takes a video game that seriously 
I mean, I, it's, but people where, are, where? there's actually like, I was at a, um, I was at like a Buffalo Wild Wings and there was the Overwatch League up on the TV. Like gaming has gotten crazy. Like, I, I get it being a professional it. thing where you can make money by playing and showing your showing off your skills and against other people as a competitive format. But like when you take it too far where you think that you are whoever your your alter ego is on whatever platform. That that kind of seems like a mental instability. Okay. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean, like if you think you're a video game character, or take your avatar into real life. Yeah. It, it, and that's what's it, and, and that's what's weird too. Okay, let me ask you this, Ravens, real quick. So now, when you, when you like, when you met your fan, or you know, you got the paperwork right from. Somebody was like, "Yeah, like really adopt me." Right? Like, do you do you get that same sort of feeling like when you're even with other like content creators where it's like they don't they like you introduce yourself by like your real name, but they still have to call you by your like your screen name? Like, yeah, yeah. You That's know, a it, familiarization it, thing where you're more familiar using somebody's pseudonym than you are using their real name. A lot so of people fall back don't on what you're like it with. though. Uh, I've, yeah, I've come I... across uh, <laughs> content creators that I follow who, um, you know, after I found out what their name was and we did have a conversation, I'm like, all right, well, I feel like I know this person well enough to call them by their first name, you know, and I got called out on it. It's like, you know, no, you don't know me well enough to use that name just yet. Call me by my YouTube name. But it's like, didn't we just talk for like an hour and a half the other day on Anyway, yeah. you know, it's I mean, I, uh, a lot of people are really particular about that. It doesn't really bother me as long as you don't know my, as long as you don't put my full name on the internet because I try not to do that at all costs because, I mean, you'd be surprised what people can get from just your name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they Google and they basically get your life history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Narcos, did I ever tell you about my other scary thing that happened? No. So no. in my time on YouTube, there's been three things that have absolutely horrified me. <laughs> and that after every single one of them, I genuinely felt like quitting YouTube. And I can say it on this podcast now because we're past those points. The one was the one I just talked about. The second one was uh, back when I was working in uh, Chicago, uh, more like the city of Cicero, Illinois. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I had somebody show up to my job, uh, approached the front desk receptionist and asked for me. Uh, they paged me over the uh, the PA, and I came up, and I didn't recognize the dude, and um, he, it was just very weird. I felt very off, off put by it that someone knows where I work without me telling them. They had to do some research. Somehow they ended up finding where I work. Um, and they wanted they wanted an art, autograph and stuff. Again, this is from 2016 when my channel was really. And booming. your full name, they knew. And they knew my full name. I had to have a talk to my with my boss, and he explained to me how it's unprofessional for me to invite guests over without uh, checking them in or signing in. And I'm like, I, I didn't even want to explain to my boss that I was doing YouTube, so I just took right. the, I just took the citation, and um, did my thing. What this, the hell? Very, very weird. Yes. Very weird. Yeah. And in my first week moving into my new place in Vegas, uh, Chris, by the way, you are extremely loud breathing into the mic. I'm so sorry uh, to those of you guys listening at home. But um, my first week moving into Vegas, I get a CD with some music. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember this. And uh, a Target gift card, which ended up being like 200 something bucks. As well as five hundred dollars. Now here's the crazy thing. I went back to the post office to figure out who sent me this thing. If it's a subscriber, I appreciate you. But how do you know my address? At this point, I didn't even put my address on on anywhere. I had just moved in. Yeah, you showed like a video of like your apartment complex or something, and they took no. what the surrounding area was. Yes. And- it on where your house so, was. So those of you guys who are subscribed with notifications on at this point, there was notifications. I briefly, and I mean briefly, for like two days, 
had a house reveal video on YouTube. When I first moved to Vegas, it was really exciting. I got to show my whole place fully furnished with like gaming consoles, my streamer room and all that. Really proud of it. And then I get this package with no sender uh, name or anything on it. So I'm like, geez, who would do this? And for, for it to be such a high dollar value amount, usually people want some kind of notoriety like, hey, shout out to this person for a $500 donation pretty much, you know. I'd have been more than happy to give it to that person, but I never got any kind of follow up. So I still to this day, to this day do not know who sent me that, that package. And I do believe in my hardest of hearts that they analyzed my house reveal video. I had brief segments uh, where I showed the outside, the exterior of my house. Didn't show the house number, but by looking at major landmarks, they were able to figure out which one was mine. Oh and I took God. and I took that video down. That video is still on my channel. It's set to uh, private. And uh, I'm it thoroughly freaked me out to the point where it's like, all right, you know what? I'm done with YouTube. I uh, I can't do it anymore. This this has become a safety concern. Oh, you have guns in your house. You're you're fine. Holy Christ, yeah, I agree. <laughs> that, And that's... you're in the FBI and have tactical training. So, <sighs> thanks, Chris. Yeah. I'm not in the FBI, by the way, Nar. I so, oh good. I was going to say, but even if you were, you know, wink, wink. You well, know, well, it's the C, it's the CIA <laughs> you want to put a good FBI. word in. <laughs> it's the CIA or the FBI. He just won't say. So, much. so Narcos, where does what does your username mean? What is Narcos? <laughs> oh God, you're gonna make me feel. It just means it's not nar free. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I much. wish it was that clever. Uh, so I I never thought I was gonna stream a day in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought literally when I got the PS4 that that was the stupidest waste of a button possible. And uh, I didn't know that uh, I was going to ever do anything like this. And I wanted it to be separate from my Xbox 360 name, um, Ted Barrier. Uh, which I, I, and it, I, of course, I spelt it with threes instead of E's because it was of super course. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Edgy. It's like putting two X's before and after your name. That makes you super awesome. Yeah. So I was I was really dumb. And I was like, I don't know what the hell to pick. But uh, I used to play, you know, outside of fa uh, you know, baseball and football and soccer and other athletic things. I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. And uh, so Narcost was literally, I, there, I used to grow up in a pretty pretty poor side of chicago and my buddies had like they were Dungeons and dragons freaks and so they had like name books you know because this was before like internet was like super super popular it was like a little bit before dsl came out right and uh so i just flipped the page and i picked it and it was narcos and what i didn't know was that like narcos means like like it was a, a tower in the Lord of the Rings book that protected humans from the orcs, and it means fire tooth. <laughs> I Elven. feel like I'm more nerdy now. <laughs> yeah, th that's <laughs> like I wish I could tell you it was cool. Like I was like gnarly, you know, it cost to be gnarly, and I just flipped him around or something stupid like that. But it's yeah, it's just a Dungeons and Dragons name. Um, so. I, I regret it every single day, but it's it's left its mark, and just people call me Nar anyway, so it makes everything nice and easy. Yeah. It's okay. I'm already an Uber nerd. I still play Dungeons and Dragons. I wish I could still. You know, I don't you have know what's time. really I, cool is how communities come together. I don't know if you know the story between uh, me and Sarge, but he he's a huge Steelers fan. I'm a huge Ravens fan, as you know. Uh, he had originally no, come no. to my channel. To uh, give with you the, crap with intentions, you're a crappy Ravens fan. With intentions of trolling me, without any having no intentions of subscribing. Um, but look at this. So he subscribed. A couple years later, he's watching us on YouTube. You and I, that is. And now he's streaming. I mean, I don't know about you, but that to me is really cool to see someone draw any bit of inspiration. Uh, and that was always my thing. Like people talk about. You know, I want to do YouTube, but I don't have this. I don't have that. Sarge can tell you, it doesn't really take much. If you, we're all of us YouTubers, and Nara, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're just 
people who have gaming consoles and a capture card. I mean, there's really nothing that sets us apart. Yeah, we have our different um, personalities and everything, but it's easy to get in. It's easy to get started. I have no personality. <laughs> it, it, and those are usually the most successful people. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I'll tell you what I do have. I've got balls of steel. Balls of steel. <laughs> but but the, well, that's the truth, though. How many times, and, and I think this is what is difficult, because I'm in a weird situation where it doesn't seem like I grow. <laughs> that's what, the, and you that's what. wise or? Well, I'm just well definitely. Both. Okay, well, that's, that, that's true, too. I was. <laughs> I was actually very tall for my age, and then I stopped growing at 13. And so, <laughs> lucky me, I've been the same height since I was 13, so this is cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's weird. Like, I went in this with zero intentions of, of becoming a streamer. I got hyper successful really quick on Twitch. Um, and I, I had massive numbers. Uh, when I shouldn't really have had. And I went crazy and said, oh, shit, this is it. It's time for me to go. Right. Uh, so, you know, so I got lost to my own, like, ego really early on, like before there was guaranteed of money. But I thought I was on the path because I was pulling major numbers for Bloodborne um, off the PS4 console and literally with the crappy camera, the whole thing. I got lucky because I was right there, an early adopter uh, for... Um, the PlayStation mm -hmm. share cast or whatever. And I didn't know I was essentially doing the PS4 trick before the PS4 trick hit. And that's a, <laughs> another elaborate. Oh yeah. Oh, if you guys don't know what that is, do a Google search. That's how a lot of people have. Come and to I want to just point out that he's on the superior system. All right. Chris. <laughs> no, no, he's, but, he's actually, he actually has other systems there, Chris. But when, when Narcos says, uh, mentions the PS4 trick, that's something you'll have to look up. We can't go over it on this podcast because it would take forever. But essentially, yep, a lot of your biggest, most popular streamers at one point ended up using that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and it unfortunately also fluffed up their, um, their ego as well as the numbers that were showing up on their streams. So... Yep, and that killed it. And that, that killed, killed it. everything. Um, I, that I will say, and I think you and I have touched this, and I don't, I don't <laughs> mind talking about this. <laughs> right. I don't mind talking about this. Is like YouTube gaming, what it was before, and what it is today. Um, yep. I've I seen mean, YouTube gaming is basically just a channel now, right? Well, YouTube gaming is completely gone. It's just it, you do gaming.youtube.com, and it just takes you to YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's the gaming. Yeah, but I mean, there, mm -hmm. there's a, there's an actual YouTube gaming channel that collects a bunch of streams and throws it on that channel. Yeah. Oh, is there? I'm not I'm not aware. Yeah, um, yeah there's. <laughs> it, it's pretty lame. I mean, you know, all you see on there is like those the really really big name uh, streamers. Yeah. And for me well, personally, if if somebody has three thousand people in their chat. And I'm trying to watch them. They have to have really a really good personality, and be really good at the game they're playing, or else I'm not interested because I can't talk to them. Right. Unless the only way that you can actually say something to them is if you give them money to say something to them, and I think that's right. retarded. Yeah. Well, well, and that was the that was the thing too is that looking back on on all of it, um, it, what what happened was that people blew up way too fast and and that was the problem because i when i jumped to youtube gaming um i was already about a year and a half or about two years on into streaming on twitch mm -hmm. and i had already been humbled by that point of having figured out like oh yeah it was actually you know preferential treatment through uh uh you know the system itself i was essentially double dipping into two marketplaces boosting the numbers up that way I was unintentionally doing that, and I didn't. It didn't comprehend because even if you look back at some of my, uh, like even my overlays where I'm saying like hit the heart button in order to like subscribe. That's what the original PS4 to subscribe on live stream was. Is like to hit a heart, and that would make you follow oh, them on okay. Twitch. Okay. So like that's how ignorant I was, and that's how fast I blew up, and I didn't know. I didn't even know that like how capture cards really worked when I bought one. 
I thought I was still going to be able to cast the PS4. And when I couldn't do that, guess what? My numbers blew a massive load all over the place. They were nothing. I went from 300 to 500 being in third place up on Twitch right next to, uh, like, I think Angry Joe and somebody else that was playing. That had no chance of, yeah, like I couldn't, I could never beat, you know. I was up there and like it lasted for like a week and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And, yeah, uh, I mean, here's the thing: like everyone starts off that way, but like you said, people on YouTube gaming just blew up really quick, and some made some really poor decisions. I'm not going to mention any names, obviously, and I'm in I'm personally in no place to talk about anyone else's poor decisions because Lord knows I'm not a perfect person, but. I am. Um, it's <laughs> it's kind of kind of crazy to see how YouTube gaming, you know, um, was was like a small family. You know, it was a small community. We'd all have each other on the list. We'd we'd do raids. We would do uh, you know community outreach stuff. As far as like YouTube community outreach stuff, if we always right. if we all had a cause that we were working on, we'd help each other get to that. Um, but to see people leave the platform um, or kind of like draw themselves back from the YouTube gaming group, um, kind of kind of upsetting, you know, because that was our whole aim was to not be part of that meta culture, not be part of that yep. YouTube or sorry, that Twitch um, mentality, mentality, yeah. that Kappa mentality. And here we are right back in it. Yeah, and, and it in worse because now nobody really it's the big guys literally trying to boost the bigger guys and like there is no real hard discussions anymore because everybody's afraid to losing the contact. Right. Losing that the possibility that big guy's gonna raid me again one day. Maybe if you know, we could have we'll have another group and make exactly. more money. I mean to and me that just seems mm-hmm. like they all accepted an envelope from somebody and they just they all disappeared. I mean Oh, there's definitely people that did that, and they, and and that was the worst part. And they became arrogant and smug about it. And that was, that that was the what was the worst part about it is that not only were instead of instead of people saying like, yeah, great job, dude, I'm really happy that you're doing it, you know, they would get in, and that person had a an iota of success. You'd literally get messages like saying, okay, man, what's the secret? Right. What's this? Who 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 is the person? Who is exactly. the person that gave you? Who would you reach to, out to? It's just quality content. And, and I don't know what quality content is. And that's what you know. Ultimately, I think that's what sucks about it because it was like the initial when the the people were literally just getting down, getting down into the dirt and trying to figure out what this was and what the possibility was. Because YouTube gaming was a was a beacon of hope for the people that got screwed over by Twitch. Some of the Absolutely. biggest guys, the, some of the biggest guys that you initially featured were failed Twitch p- partners. People that got denied because Twitch's original partnership program was incredibly strict. There was, I think it was less than 6% of the entire population on Twitch was partnered at one given time. And that was what the scary part was. There was people that, a person who is a Twitch partner now, and I had a lot of my initial success because he just came across me and he gave me opportunities when I was just starting out, which was awesome. He lost jobs pursuing that dream. He lost friendships and he had to literally go out of his way to support Twitch to make them notice him. Right. He was the one who, who suggested to me, it's like, if you really want to make it, it's not going to be behind the camera. If you're not willing to go ahead and spend about double networking and you know preferably in person you really weren't going to make it and that was and that there was a lot of that stuff where like i never thought i would get so involved in streaming politics but the what happens off camera with content creators you cannot make up there is no movie script that will ever come close to the level of intricacy and it's it's literally like a a tom clancy book of (laughs) of politics and manipulating an audience (laughs) yeah Yeah, it really is um i have a lot of respect for people who 
abandon their nine to five to pursue YouTube um, full time. It, it, that's got to take a lot of strength, a lot of um, a lot of willpower to do. Because essentially, what you're doing is you're trading a guaranteed fixed income to something that's as fluid as the water in the sea. Um, someone can put together, uh, you know, as far as people who put out VODs, videos on demand, they can work on a script for a video for 14, 21 hours, put out a video and have a small part of that video copyright striked. And now the whole video is all for naught and you're not getting any kind of ad revenue. I think to me, and I'm just speaking from, from my own personal standpoint, YouTube is more fun for me when I do it as a side gig or if I just do it for fun. I've never looked at it as a job. Yeah. Oh, I, when, I start, when I started, I don't expect to ever make money. Yeah, I think to, um, you, that if you quit your job for YouTube, the, I would hope you have a big following and have had success because I'd hate to see somebody give all that up and chase a pipe dream and then their family and them, you know, struggle. Yeah. How so. many, well, how many big boys have we seen, Ravens, really, that big boys that pull numbers we could only dream of throw away their entire life for it? Good jobs. <laughs> I know. I know, dude. You know, it, and that's what scares me. Like, the number that you think you need is, it's like firewood. Being a streamer is like trying to get firewood for a, a cold night, right? Yeah. Get, get the, the What's the saying? Gather as much as you think you need and then double it. Mm-hmm. And you have to keep on stoking that fire. It's a constant mental drain. It's a meat grinder. And if you don't do it for the right reasons... The minute that, that those numbers don't coincide with whatever your your aspirations are, yep. it's going to be soul crushing. <laughs> and here's the thing too, um, just like anything, YouTube and, or and I hate to say just YouTube, but like Twitch, any kind of like online video content creation, if you're doing that full time, you're essentially working for yourself. But also, a lot of the same stressors from real life also affect you. Um, in essence. Uh, for example, it's like, you know, the old saying, it, it, it takes a long time to build up a good reputation, but only one small instance to completely demolish it. I feel like the same oh, yeah. thing is true online. Um, what was that one, uh, that one Twitch streamer? I forget his name, but I know you for a fact shared this video on Twitter and I did as well. He was a pretty successful uh, Twitch streamer. Uh, he ended up going to some Twitch event and essentially berating his his loyal viewers, saying that he's better than them and that he's got some kind of oh, god complex. I know what you're talking about. Is he the one who said that I don't want to talk to him offline? And he, that, he said that I one? don't. He said I will never play a game with you. We will never have subscriber movie night. I don't want my subscribers to have anything in common with me because I am higher. In importance yeah, I, than the average person. Well, I like to think of myself. Yeah, and he was, a, and he was only an affiliate. I mean, like you are, he was. I don't even think he was. He was a recent partner that got like forty people on a stream. Like, and and that's the, and but that's the thing though. Like, in all honesty, the the most successful people I've seen as content creators are the most vile fucking human beings <laughs> yeah <laughs> off that camera and, and that's what's always scared me um as a content creator is because i remember there's been a couple months where i made some pretty damn decent money um for an hour and a half a night yeah i made some pretty damn nice money especially when everything was going strong you know, everything was still optimistic. Like, it was pretty damn good for all of us. And right. that's why, you know, it, that's what gets scary. Because I can see that happening. Like, I'm, I'm sure, like, like anyone, 
Like I'm, I, I'm certain that I wouldn't become that. But if somebody threw a lot of money at me, would I give them a shout out? If somebody gave you five hundred dollars to just shout out, I don't know, an energy drink, you wouldn't do it. Five hundred dollars guaranteed. Absolutely just... not. I am above that, sir. Yeah. But if you make a thousand dollars, I will definitely do it. <laughs> and everyone um, has their price, right? So I, yeah. And I no, think, uh, you'd have to pay me five hundred. And... I think advertisers understand that. That's why. Um, again, shout out to my sponsors. I'm not plugging them or anything, but um, my first and only sponsor, Jerky XP, they ended up hitting me up because they're like, "Hey, we see your numbers on on uh, YouTube streams. You know, would you like to be sponsored and all that?" And I was one of their first ever sponsors. So they react based off of how well you do. And. That- <laughs> Yeah, but the thing too is, is that you don't you plug them here and there, but it's not like check out Jerky XP. Oh, by the way, if you're just coming in, check out Jerky XP. Yeah, you know that I, I won't There's beat you over the head who, with it ever. There's streamers who do that, and it's just like, okay, I I think I'll go watch somebody else who I'm not watching an infomercial. And you know what, Narcos? Um, I don't know how much you know about Chris, but I draw a lot from him, whether he knows us or not. Uh, because he represents the kind of like the average viewer. He tells me a lot of stuff. We've talked a lot in private DMs and stuff like, hey, you know, I saw this streamer do this the other day. If you ever do this, I'm unsubscribing. And they're great points. Uh, most and- recently, he's like, you know, he Chris, tell him about the uh, one streamer who kept referring to his audience as chat. Oh, dude, that was oh. so annoying. Like, and I, you know, I'm usually like saying it in jest, like I wouldn't really unsubscribe, but it's, right. But anyways, like, he's like, Hey chat, Hey chat, what are we going to do? Chat, uh, chat. And I mean, I get if you say, Hey chat, but when it's every third word, <laughs> it's, it's a kind it, of excessive. It's, it's like, why don't you just call me guys or dudes or something, but chat, Branding. chat, chat, chat. It's called it's branding, calling, dude. They're calling you jerk off. <laughs> That's, I'd mean, rather that the... than be called like chat. That wouldn't be the worst thing I've ever been called. Uh, but uh, you know that again, Chris is not a content creator. He he's he doesn't even have a face cam or anything like that. He he's just a YouTube. He's an average YouTuber. He goes to YouTube and uh, he's a consumer. You know, um, yeah. and by by way of being a YouTuber, you and I and Sarge. We are also consumers because not only do we create our own content, but we watch other content. Um, but I think that a lot of the stuff we do on our own streams and a lot of stuff we see other people do can kind of jade us. Whereas a consumer only, such as Chris, um, doesn't really have the same kind of impact or stressors that we may have. And maybe that's just, maybe I'm being of an idiot and like that's not even that big of a deal but to me it's really annoying you know i mean you're entitled to your opinion if if you feel offended by something no matter how small it is you're still offended by it just so i'm gonna put this in the sinister way and this is not implicating ravens at all and i'm not saying that he's doing this or he you know he would ever consider doing this right so the, the, my idea behind all of this is that, I, and I'm sure those of you who are streamers or at least, can, you know, even consumers that watch larger streamers, like there's some people that worship other content, like they worship the content creator, uh, wherever they are, they, yeah. can, they can do whatever they want. I'm saying like, if think about what you could do. You know, if you knew people worshipped you and you were really just there to make that money, like you didn't care how you made it, you know, like you could like there's and it's people all the time that do it, you know, hey, sweetie, or whatever it is. They try to fulfill this weird fantasy for their audience because they know that they'll break and they'll pay them for it. Right. Like that's the, there's people that do worship other people. And that's why you have to be careful as a content creator. But Listen. it's like. That's why people are very, very open to manipulation once they start worshiping these kind of, like, you know, the people behind the camera. The idea of that person is not always the person who really is. And that's what's 
that's what's freaky you know like it's uh it, it's a scary tug of war and there's people that have taken advantage of being these online need celebrities and, and then that's what's like it's really horrifying it's that's what makes streaming so beautiful but it's also what makes it so scary because you do have the two extremes you have the the love and then you have the worship then you have the disliking and then you have the hatred where they're trying to you know get your information and dox you it can be it's crazy it's way weirder than you could possibly think. Yeah. It, wasn't wasn't there a streamer that just got arrested not long ago because he was having his viewers send like his underage viewers send him videos of them twerking or something? Oh yeah, big time. It was a YouTuber. That's happened quite a few. That's times. what I was talking about. Yeah. 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 Like, he just went to jail for it. And for a long time. <laughs> like yeah. it was... Well, I mean, deservedly so. But right. Yeah, and I believe they went as far as to call that child pornography. So they hit him with the uh, um, perpetuating and facil. Sorry, I think it's called perpetuating and facilitating child pornography, which is a heavy hit. Uh, That's a charge that can never leave your uh, well, your criminal record. Yeah, you register as a sex offender the day you get out, and that ruins your life right there. I think. I don't even think you can work at a car wash because kids come to car, you know. Right. Yeah. You're, <laughs> it, there's a lot of stipulations that are that play hand in hand with that. But uh, it's kind of switching gears. Um, I, I like how uh, I forget who it is. I'm sorry if I'm blanking on a name, but one of one of the people in my recent stream said, "Hey, when you do your um, podcast with these guests." You should have them answer a question, like something controversial, not to the point where it's like divisive or anything, but just something <laughs> sure. controversial. And that's how we're going to end the podcast. So with that okay. being said, <laughs> I know there's a big gear switch right here, but what is your opinion on aliens? Do you think oh, they exist? Okay. That's not a controversial question. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to answer? Because I'm about to go deep. You're talking to the Star well, Wars. Go right? deep. Go deep. I'm this is go, your I'm moment gonna, to shine. All right. That, I believe, mathematically speaking, there has to be aliens. There, there has to be. Out of everything, anywhere, at any given moment in the universe, what we can see and what we can't see, and what we've even observed in the last 200 years of science, is just, it's ridiculous. The idea that out of all the billions of trillions of stars that are out there, that we are the only things that is the most depressing thing i could have ever imagined <laughs> think well, I mean, about that, that it takes a lot of hubris too to think that we're the only ones that are smart enough to live you know what i mean it's right like, and then that's what i'm saying like the the mathematical probability <laughs> of doing that <laughs> Is like circumcising a gnat, you know, from across the planet. There is no way, there is no way that we're going to be able to pull that like that. And that's like, even if let's just take even the religious context of that, mm-hmm. that that really sucks. If God literally put us on this planet in a dead universe and said, "Hey, deal with each other," you got. You guys are cool, and you're also going to have really bad disagreements. <laughs> so, yeah. and you're just get, and and that's what sucks. I I don't think it could possibly work that way, where we're the only things out there. And I think there's, you know, we can't even see in certain spectrums of light that bees can, for Christ's sake. Right. Like they can see in infrared. Like who knows what we're really missing around us? And think about even what we thought about particular science like particular treatments even 20 years ago that seemed barbaric to by today's standards like it it's nuts and like what i'm excited for is to see like what my children's children are going to see because oh, yeah, even in absolutely. Life, like we're going to the moon baby nasa's going to the moon we're making a moon colony think about that That's like commercial nuts. flights of the moon that'd be so sick that would be sick as fuck. You're like, think about that. You could, go the, you could literally have a honeymoon, dude. Like, I'm starting literally. a business right now. <laughs> literally have a honeymoon. And, like, I'm telling you, we're nothing. We're, like, we're bacteria considered to how many billions of years that our universe is. Uh, think about what we've done in 100 years of human science. Like, God forbid that there was something that, I don't know, ate more protein or took psychedelic mushrooms way more than us. Who knows what they're able to do? 
who knows like (laughs) you know like we can only measure by what we can see and the fastest thing is light like i think hell yeah even what we're doing with him there's got to be aliens because if there's not i'm super sad because (laughs) how could we be the only you know the hairless monk and also for there to be so many different um local um you know individual accounts of what people are seeing and it's all matching up with reasonably without with a little bit of variance um to the same type of description of what they're seeing so uh, well are the aliens friendly or are they adversarial that's what i want to know i think okay. we're ant well i think we're ants to them we're a science experiment and besides if you were an alien right you 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 travel you've mastered space travel that you can actually detect other life and you can get to it before you die right and just enough that you're doing like a research team and you're looking at these pretty much you know hairless apes making nukes for christ's sake it's like what how can we hate each other that much i bet you those aliens are very much like you and i in the sense like (laughs) hey do you want to go to the zoo and see the monkeys yeah yeah and you know i like i like the way neil degrasse tyson puts it where he's like if there's other intelligent life on Earth or on in the universe, and they've come to see us, it's no wonder they haven't, you know, communicated or anything. They no, look I at wouldn't. us and they're like, "These people are so dumb. They're killing their own planet and killing each other. <laughs> We're out of here. Peace." Yeah. Why would you go and talk with the people that can't talk to themselves? Like it's like they haven't unified it d- towards anything. We literally got over a war of an economic system. Like, oh yeah, you know, like right. that's. See, Gene it's... Roddenberry's future will never happen because there's people like Chris around. <laughs> and Jake Paul. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Darkos, I really want to say appreciate you for being on the podcast, taking the time on your uh, busy schedule to be on here. Is there anything before we go that you'd like to um, kind of like promote? Obviously, we're going to put your YouTube uh, link okay. and your Twitter down below. But is there anything else? Oh, man, just... Trying to grind through the days, streaming, trying to be entertaining. You know, we got a little voice project on the side, but yeah, I know it's pretty much nothing, man. It's like I just want to thank you guys for coming on out and letting me be here, and <laughs> it was a lot of fun actually doing one of these things. I miss it. Uh, I miss talking with other content creators with these wonky topics. So I appreciate oh, yeah. it, dude. I mean, if you're willing, you we'd like we'd love to have you back yeah. on sometime. Yeah, definitely yeah. have you back. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, I would love to stop on by and keep on talking with you guys. <laughs> we can yeah, get into it because there's. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's nice to finally you know get down and sit down. I've been meaning to do this for a long time, so I really do appreciate it. <laughs> we appreciate I have one more you. question for you, Nar. Have you sure. ever seen the movie The Giver? The, the Giver with uh, David Hayter in it? Hell yeah! <laughs> yes. That's we'll what I'm trying to get Raven to do on tomorrow night's movie night. Oh God. Does it have uh, Mark Hamill in it too? I think it. Yes, Mark Hamill's yes, Mark the main Hamill's bad in it. guy, right? I think he's the main bad guy. Even my thing I don't is know if he's the bad guy. I think that, he's like the sidekick or something. I don't know. I don't my remember. Thing is that but, it can't be worse than Birdemic? So therefore, I'm all yeah. for it. And you absolutely your Power good. Rangers with more violence. <laughs> I don't think it looks too great from what I've seen. Of oh, it. Chris, if it's not you know something you watch on a regular basis why don't we watch a movie about serial killers then you'll be interested (laughs) with that that being said we're gonna go ahead and conclude this podcast this has been sarge chris myself and narcos checking out uh as always we're giving a huge shout out to our fellow servicemen and women and our veterans who have served this country and are still serving to preserve our freedoms appreciate you all for listening And we will catch you on the next one.